Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Catherine and I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button for this video. It does wonders for my channel. So today I'm gonna to be going over a discharge dye project that I did. And I started out with using bleach and then I ended up going to white bright, which is um, I think a better way of doing discharge dyeing. So um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of like my bleach dye fail and then how I fixed it with the white bright. And I think it turned out really well. So let me know in the comments down below if you think I should over dye this or if you think it looks cool. Right now I see a lot of bleach dye stuff and it definitely has like a look to it and it's definitely trending. Also, stay tuned because I am going to be sewing a garment out of this. I'm not entirely sure what kind. It is a small piece of fabric. So let me know down in the comments what you would make out of it and um, if you would over dye it I, and what colors you would over dye it. So without further ado, let's get into it and I'm going to go over all the supplies and link them down in the description below. So first you're going to need some dark colored fabric. I used a dark brown color. Then you're going to need some string and some scissors for tying up your fabric. Soda ash and water. A bucket to mix up your soda ash and water. A stir stick for stirring gloves to protect your hands, a mask, and I also worked outside for this project, a hot plate to heat up your stock pot to mix up your water and your white bright, Synthepol for washing your fabric before and after, and two thirds of a cup of white bright. So again, everything is listed down in the description box below. So now let's talk about the fabric. As you can see, it's dark brown and it has some bleach on it. I tried to bleach discharge this fabric over two years ago with some bleach and a spray bottle and this was the result. And it's okay, but I wasn't like in love with it so I sort of just saved it and thought I'll do another project with it eventually. I don't know if you have anything like that in your fabric stash. So this fabric has been pre-washed and I'm going to fold it up again and then dye it with white bright instead. So I'm going to do a basic accordion fold. I'm going to fold the fabric in half uh, widthwise and then accordion fold it into a rectangle to have a long, thin rectangle. If you guys are looking for more folding inspiration, I have a ton of tutorials on my channel, so you should check it out and see what other kind of folds there are. This is just a basic stripe, so I'm going to accordion fold the piece of fabric into a rectangle the best that I can. You can see it's really drapey because it is a jersey and um, I'm just doing my best to get it into a rectangle shape on top of itself. If you wanna get even deeper into dyeing, I do have online workshops available on my website, onyxartstudio.com, and I encourage you to go check it out and sign up for my mailing list so you never miss a new date. Next, I'm coming in with my string and I'm going to cut it and double knot it and tie it just as tight as I possibly can. When I'm doing resist dyeing, I wanna make sure that the resist is a good resist, so I tie either the rubber bands or the string as tight as I possibly can. So I'm just going to cut a bunch of strings here and then I'm going to tie them wherever I want a stripe. I would say I am making these about four inches apart and again, I'm just tying them as tight as I possibly can. So I got the fabric tied up with about four inch increments between stripes and I decided I wanted to make more stripes. So I'm just cutting some more string and I'm gonna come in and tie another string in between the existing string. So about every two inches. And you can see I'm just tying it around and around to get it as tight as possible. This is Jersey fabric and Jersey, when it's dyed, tends to absorb the dye or the discharge solution really, really fast. So I just want it to be super duper tight because it's gonna go into a boiling stock pot and sit there for a while. So I want to make sure my resist is very strong. 
So I just took my time and I got it completely tied up. You can see it's ready to go. So next I'm gonna head out outside and start to set up my dye station. Here I'm filling up my stock pot with about eight to 10 cups of water. And this is my stock pot that I only use for dyeing. Here is my setup for um, the discharge dyeing outside. You can see I have a hot plate and my stock pot is starting to simmer. I am soaking my fabric in some water and I have some pretty heavy duty gloves, a mask, and here is my white bright. Okay, so now I'm gonna go outside and see what's going on, see if the water's boiling and if it's ready to add the white bright. So the water is simmering and I'm gonna add about a third of a cup of white bright and just stir it up until it's completely dissolved. So next I'm gonna squeeze the water out of my fabric and I'm going to add it into my stock pot and make sure it is submerged. And then I just wait. Next, I'm gonna add about a fourth of a cup of soda ash to the water that I have here, and I'm going to stir it up, and that's going to be my bath for the fabric after I take it out of the white bright. So I waited a while and noticed that it wasn't changing color, so I added another third of a cup of white bright to my solution. It's doing something. I'm really into this blue color. So that's cool. Um, I have no idea what the inside's gonna look like. I'm tempted to let it get back up to a simmer, which might be like 10 more minutes or so. Last time I did this, the white bright worked really fast, but I'm outside and it's pretty cold, so that might be part of it. And it's also just a different piece of fabric, which really can affect everything. So I'm just gonna be patient and wait. So, Wow, this is really discharged a lot more. Okay, I'm glad I left it in. So now I'm going to just put it into my soda ash solution. And this is really hot, so I'm not gonna touch it. But I'm gonna just kind of let it drip and put it in my soda ash. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Oh, I love it. Okay, cool. So after it cooled down, I brought my piece inside and I'm gonna wash it with some water to rinse out the excess discharge. And then I'm going to take it apart and wash it with Cintopol in the washer. And here I'm gonna save my white bright solution for soaking my very dirty rags. All right, so are you guys ready to see the finished product? Here it is. And you can see I got these really cool like blue sort of patches and you can see where the bleach spray was originally. So it really is super unique. I like how it has some cool and some warm elements and it's a really nice stripe. So let me know what you guys think about this one and um, what colors you would over dye it if you would over dye it or if you would just leave it. Be sure to stay tuned for the sewing part of this yardage. I am so excited to be launching a sewing series. And I'm really curious to know what you guys would make with this fabric. So anyway, stay tuned for the next video and thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. You can go and follow me on my other social media platforms at onyxartstudio.com for more inspiration. And be sure to check out my online workshops on my website, onyxartstudio.com. If you like this video, be sure to check out my channel for all my other tutorial videos. Here are some other videos that you might enjoy. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.